so let us now discuss the brainstorming of the poem 2.1 the cherry tree by ruskin bond so the first question is find proof from the poem for the following a the poet has mentioned different seasons in the line 7 we see and suddenly that summer near the end of may and in line 12 split it apart and a monsoon blight here we come to see that the poet has described different seasons two are mentioned here so let us see the next question the b sub question is the poet's minute observation of the steady growth of the cherry tree in several lines we see during the summer the plant is small five months child and suddenly in spring he saw the plant has three new shoots so let us see the next question the next question is c the color imagery in the poem we see the colors green growing pain pink fragile steady to fall dark cherry dappled green leaves and blue blind sky so these are the various colors used by the poet in the particular poem so the next is the d1 which is the struggle of the cherry tree for survival now how do we come to know there are some lines that during the monsoon blight that during the monsoon storm the tree was split apart then the goat ate its leaves somewhere the farmer uh, sorry the gardener he cut the leaves using his scythe and we could also see the struggle for the upward thrust the struggle of the tree to get sunlight air and water state whether the following statements are true or false correct the false statements by finding evidence from the poem to support your remark so let's see so the very first statement is that the cherry tree did not take long to grow this is the false statement as we come to know from the very first line it says that 8 years have passed since i placed my cherry seed in the grass that means the cherry tree took 8 years to grow the next is b birds and insects were benefited from the tree that is the true as in the last stanza we can see the bees drinking in ecstasy the juice from the tree the poet was exalted at the sight of the cherry tree that is true he was happy to see finally the grown cherry tree the d1 is the poem has an underlying message about the importance of trees it is also true because he always wanted to have a tree for himself and we should always uh, also have one particular tree for ourselves the next is e the poet repents planting the cherry tree the meaning of repents here that he was sorry for planting the cherry tree we don't have seen the following thing so this particular sentence is false as the poet was very happy uh, to have the decision of having his own tree and finally we see that when the tree grew up he was extremely happy and he took great care of the tree let us discuss the a2 question that is discuss in groups reason consequences and effects the first a1 says that the life of the cherry tree was threatened as we have seen that the poet was least least interested in the growth of the cherry tree as he had only planted the cherry tree and forgot about it but the life of the cherry tree was threatened because of the monsoon blight that is the storms which split the tree into two parts we have seen that sometimes the goats had eaten all the leaves sometimes the gardener's scythe had cut the tender stems sometimes because of the harsh weather the tree split into two parts and sometimes the leaves were dried up but against all the odds yet the tree wanted to live we have seen that without having any attention from the person who wanted to have a cherry tree without any provided without any extra care the tree has stood strong and has overcome all the hurdles in its life the next is the cherry blossom the poet always wanted to own a cherry tree so he planted a small sapling and later forgot about it after watering it once he failed to nurture the young plant the young sapling received no attention or any personal care from the poet the young tree faced many problems and ob- obstacles in his life but it finally achieved success and grew into a big tree which had fresh ripe pink and fragile cherries so we can say the tree was standing strong like never before and finally the cherries blossomed on the young majestic tree the second sub question is a small thought put into action led to a great achievement now we have to pick out the lines from the beginning and end of the poem to explain its significance what we have to do we have to find lines from the poem which will completely make sense to the above question which is a small thought put into action led to a great achievement 
so let's start the first sentence is that must have a tree of my own i said is the first sentence the poet just wanted to own a cherry tree so he planted a tiny sapling of a cherry tree he completed the action by planting the tree but with the passing time he completely forgot about it but the small plant without any care or support fought against all the threats and managed somehow to grow and exist on its own we have seen in the poem next sentence is yes i praised night and stars and tree that small the cherry grown by me and a question mark now here he expresses the happiness of the poet and finally achieving his dream of owning a tree but also he admits the fact that he only planted the sapling but the true hero is the tree itself he admits that without any help the tree has managed to grow strong in every situation and achieve success we have seen the situations that the uh, small sapling has faced to become the strong tree in the end we can say yes the poet was excited to finally own a tree now let us discuss about the ek three question which is the cherry tree has inspired the poet to compose the poem such poems describing nature or aspects of nature are called as nature poems find out search expressions from the poem that bring out elements of beauty of nature the expression are as follows first i could scarcely believe it a berry ripened and jeweled in the sun second one dot 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 they were blossoms small pink fragile quick to fall the next expression is looking up through leaves each bloom and the fourth one the sun sank later bees in ecstasy drank and singing crickets all these are close to nature thus all the above expressions bring out the nature aspect and the beauty of the poem a4 first one read the line pink fragile quickly fall notice the arrangement of the words in the line they move from healthy to delicate now this figure of speech where the words move from an ascending order that is one after the other giving the meaning this figure of speech is known as the climax so we will be seeing more about the figure of speech which is known as the climax now in this figure of speech is known as the climax where successive words that means one word after the other uh, phrases sentences are arranged in ascending order of importance that means in this particular type of figure of speech the words which are of more importance one after the other the words start to be put up here the cherry blossoms turn pink ripen and is ready to be picked so see each word is perfectly fixed to give the importance now let us see the second sub question which is find out examples from the poem now we have to find out examples of the given poetic devices the first is alliteration we have a line which says she revealed the slender stem only wait as one who watched wandering wild time here two examples are given in the first the consonant sound s and in the second the consonant sound w is repeated more than two times and the next is antithesis came back thinner rather poor but richer by a cherry tree at my door see here the opposites that is poor and richer are uh, what is a fixed in the same sentence now the next is personification blue blind sky bees in an ecstasy drank singing crickets all these are in an some are in animate objects some are insects which have been given the attributes of humans like being blind or having happiness or singing now let us see the next question that is a5 first one cherry tree is a narrative poem features that make it a narrative poem are given below justify with proper examples let's see the first option is a the poem has a beginning a middle and an end now how do we come to know this so the first line of the poem 8 years have passed since i placed a cherry seed in the grass this is the beginning of the poem i watched three new shoots grow young trees of worth thirst 
this is the middle of the poem and the final is that small cherry tree grown by me the last line shows this is the end of the poem so we can clearly say that the poem has a beginning a middle and an end now the b option says that different places are mentioned in the poem so we come to know that the poet's garden or backyard is the first place where the poet had actually planted that small sapling and only place mentioned is kashmir when he came back from kashmir these are the two places mentioned in the poem now the c question characters are referred to so there are many characters in the poem the first character is the poet himself the next is the goat which ate the leaves the next is a gardener who side cut the leaves then we have the birds who were eating the uh, what to say cherries the insects which were enjoying those fruits the moon moths the singing crickets and the bees who an ecstasy drank the fluid from the fruits thus we come to know that there are many characters in the poem one the d is incidents are arranged in a sequence now yes the entire poem is arranged in a particular sequence the first is the poet's desire to own a tree he plants a cherry seed in the grass next he waters it once later in the summer a small plant rises then the goat eat the leaves grass cut a side cut it down the monsoon winds break it leaves dry up but three new shoots grow three, the tree struggle for light air and sun is seen the tree now turns to dark brown color then it grew 6 feet tall the poet was surprised to see this wonderful change as he was not there for one season only one cherry was there on the tree next year more cherries were present on the tree they were pink they were fragile sweet ready to be plucked he was very eager to pluck them down and eat finally it had grown in a big tree he laid below the tree in the grass seeing the birds and insects enjoying the fruits on the tree thus looking at all these incidents we see a sequence in the incidents now let us see the e option there is a dialogue between the poet and the readers or the characters of the poem must have a tree of my own the poet tries to strike a dialogue with us expressing his desire to own a tree this is for us the readers so thus we come to know yes there is a dialogue between the poet and the readers then it is a time bound poem yes the first line it is her past then we see usage of various seasons such as summer monsoon and spring which indicate that it yes this poem is a time bound poem